Um, my name is Ira Herod, Ira Sirkar Herod. I'm the Sufi director on the Greater Kansas City Interfaith Council and a member of the Environment and Social Justice Committee, which has organized this event tonight. On behalf of the Interfaith Council and the Refugees and Immigrant Services and Empowerment Program, um, or RISE, and of the Kansas City Library, I welcome you to the forum, Understanding Our Brothers and Sisters, Immigrants and Refugees in America. I want to thank the library for hosting us and co-sponsoring the event, but note that Julie Robinson, uh, the director of RISE, is not able to be here tonight to uh, represent her program, but she has prepared a, some video comments that we will uh, be, be projecting shortly. Um, and I want to uh, thank and acknowledge the experience and uh, wisdom of uh, our panelists who you will be hearing from. These include uh, Sister Janet Cashman, a sister of Loretto and a provider of immigrant services, Dr. Sophia Khan, a Muslim community leader and founder of KC for Refugees, Bill Genza, who is, uh, has experienced the asylum seeking process and will share, and has also worked for some um, refugee settlement organizations, uh, uh, Trinidad Molina, who's with Advocates for Immigrant Rights and Reconciliation, and Judy Ansel, president of Cross Border Network. And I'll provide more information about each of our speakers uh, as we go forward. Following the panelists' remarks, uh, there will be a Q&A that will allow you to ask your questions. Uh, throughout the panel presentation, I encourage you to raise your hand and Bennett Seaman, who is the Secretary of the Greater Kansas City Interfaith Council and the Chair of our uh, Environment and Social Justice Committee, will have cards. And I think um, um, Alan Edelman will also have cards. Alan's over here, and Bennett. Uh, oh, okay, Alan will be, be playing that role. And he is the um, uh, person elect um, of the Council. Um, so throughout the program, if you kind of want to signal that you have a question or you, want, or you know you're going to have some questions, kind of raise your hand and you can get a card to write them down so that when the Q&A um, period begins, then uh, uh, you'll, be, you'll have your questions ready. Um, I, I don't think it, we have any literature from our organizations, but please, after the program, uh, come and speak to the uh, presenters and see if you can find out more information on how to get how to get involved in uh, their uh, activities. I do think we have a sign-up list for the Cross Border Network that will be out on the tables um, at the, after the program. Okay, let's see. That uh, you may know there are bathrooms. Um, outside on the left side down the hall um, and I think that's all all the logistics uh, that I have so um, we're sorry that um, the timing of our program um, conflicts with the Diwali ceremony or, or festival um, of, uh, of the Hindu faith but perhaps uh, this is a quite appropriate uh, that our event is taking place now because the Diwali uh, uh, a festival symbolizes the victory of light over darkness, of evil, uh, of, of good over evil, of knowledge over ignorance. So we hope tonight that, that we will further uh, those causes and that we'll be uh, contributing to the victory of these things. Um, as a member of the Greater Kansas City Interfaith Council's um, Environment and Social Justice Committee, um, and seeing the increasing numbers of immigrants and refugees seeking asylum or new homes in the United States and in other countries around the world, and knowing that peoples all over are being displaced by violence, 
war, famine, extreme poverty, discrimination, human rights abuses, climate change, which will only be increasingly a cause of uh, human migration, um, and more. We believe that reflection on our faith's values and learning about ways to help those in need is crucial. The holy texts of many faiths represented on the Interfaith Council call upon their members to welcome the stranger, to recognize our unity, and to see oneself in the other, or even see God in the other. Just to refer to a few examples of our faith messages or wisdom, in Exodus 23 and 9 we hear, Do not oppress the stranger. You know the feeling of the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. The Sanskrit mantra from the Upanishads, Ututi Devo Bhavha, means the guest is God, expressing the fundamental importance of hospitality in the Hindu culture. And the Baha'i tradition, teaches that, quote, love and good faith must so dominate the human heart that men will regard the stranger as a familiar friend, the malefactor as one of their own, the alien even as a loved one, the enemy as a companion, dear and close. Shortly we will hear more in depth the, the uh, uh, teachings from the Islamic and Catholic and Christian faith traditions calling upon their followers to treat the stranger in a way that is humane and loving. However, we want this program to not just reflect our faith's moral teachings, but also wanted to provide information about the causes of the immigrant and refugee crises, and things that you can do here in Kansas City to alleviate some of the pain and suffering. So with these things in mind, we'll begin our panel presentations. First, we'll have two panel members speaking of their faith traditions. And so I will invite uh, Janet Cushman, Cashman, a sister of Loretto of Leavenworth, who has done ministry service with immigrants in Italy, New Mexico and the Kansas City Metro. She is partially accredited by the U.S. Department of Justice and provided legal uh, services to immigrants through Catholic Charities in Gallup, New Mexico. As a member of a project sponsored by the International Catholic Religious Women, she provided a welcoming environment for immigrants arriving from Africa on the shores of Sicily, Italy and currently provides immigrant support services at Catholic Charities of the Northeast Kansas and is a board member of Advocates for Immigrant Rights and Reconciliation. So yeah, I invite Sister Janet to come up and share her remarks. Good evening to all, and thank you for your presence here tonight, and for your interest in migrants and immigration. And as was told, I will be speaking about the, the Christian faith and its approach to immigrants, its beliefs about the treatment of immigration to welcome them. It is truly an international phenomenon because in, on any given day, there is an estimated 24 million people on the move in the world, migrating for reasons of hunger and safety as a result of wars and violence 
devastating floods, and more. And I am of the Catholic faith, and so I'm not really able to speak all of, for all the different denominations of the Christian faith. But I can speak to the reality that members of these many different Christian congregations, we do sit down together, Catholics and Christians, as well as other religions also, together in many different organizations throughout the world to assist and care for the immigrants and to welcome them to their new life, to their new life and reality. In fact, my fellow panel member, Trinidad Moreno, representing AIR, and will be informing us of just one of those organizations, and I think some others in the, on the panel also, of many how the different Christian and different faith people of the world are coming together around this issue. And the one common factor among the, the Christian faith and dominations is our Holy Bible. And I will share just a few <coughs> of the many passages found in our Holy Bible regarding the welcome of, of immigrants. In the book, in Genesis, it says, The great God, mighty and awesome, who has no favorites, accepts no brides, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and befriends the alien, feeding and clothing him. So you too must befriend the alien, for you were once alien yourselves in the land of Egypt. In the book of Leviticus of the Bible, it says, you shall treat the alien who resides with you no differently than the native born among you. In Psalm 146 in the Bible, it says, The Lord protects the strangers, sustain the orphans and widows. In the book of Jeremiah of the Bible, it says, Only if you thoroughly reform your ways and deeds, if each of you deals justly with his neighbor. If you no longer oppress the resident alien, the orphan alien, and widow, then I will remain with you in this place. The book of Ezekiel, it says, you shall allot it as an inheritance for yourselves and for the aliens who reside among you and have begotten children among you. They shall be to you as citizens of Israel. With you they shall be allotted an inheritance among the tribes. Of Matthew it says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Finally, one more Colossians. In that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, slave and free, but Christ is all in all. So these again are just a few of the many Phrases that the, our Catholic Christian Bible refers to when it comes to how we should treat the alien. Okay. Now, as for the, the teaching of the Catholic Church regarding treatment of immigrants and refugees, there is proclaimed, this is proclaimed through different documents authored by a pope, who is the leader of all Catholics and are believed to be true. And all such documents are built upon a scriptural basis found in our Holy Bible. An example is found in the book of Leviticus, which says, you shall treat the alien who resides with you no differently than the native born among you. And these are strong words that we need to consider in these days. And the first document that commented on the situation of immigrants was proclaimed in 1891. And since then, and through the years up to the latest such documents, authored by the current Pope Francis, 
The church's commitment to immigrants has continually developed, and three principles have emerged. On the first principle, people have the right to migrate to sustain their lives and the lives of their families. This is based on the ancient biblical and Christian teaching that the goods of the earth belong to all people. While the right to private property is defended in Catholic social teaching, individuals do not have a right to use private property without regard for the common good. Also, on the basis of these documents, the Catholic Church maintains that every person has an equal right to receive from the earth what is necessary for life, food, clothing, and shelter. Moreover, every person has the right to education, medical care, religion, and expression of one's culture. And this is every person. It's not, it includes the migrants and the immigrants that, we, that are coming into our country. This is supported in scripture as we have seen. And this principle also teaches us that the native does not have superior rights over the immigrant. Before God, all are equal. The earth was given by God to all. When a person cannot achieve meaningful life in his or her own land, that person has the right to move. And the second principle of these documents that has emerged from these documents is a country has the right to regulate borders and to control immigration. However, the overriding principle means that a moral person cannot consider only what is good for his and her own family, but must act with the good of all as his or her guiding principle. The third principle, a country must regulate its borders with justice and mercy. Such regulation must be governed by concern for all people and by mercy and justice. A nation may not simply decide to provide for its own people and no others. A sincere commitment to the needs of all must prevail. And these three principles are certainly speaking to the situation on the southern border of the U.S. with Mexico. And moving to more current visions of immigration, the church considers this current <clears throat> U.S. immigration policy that criminalizes the mere attempt to immigrate and immigrants that have committed no crime or have already served a just sentence for a crime and this is immoral, according to the church's teachings. In the Christian Bible, God promises that our judgment will be based on our treatment of the most vulnerable. Before God, we cannot excuse inhumane treatment of certain persons by claiming that there is a legal status that deprives them of right given by the Creator God. And finally, immigration policy that allows people to live here and contribute to the society for years, but refuses to offer them the opportunity to achieve legal status, does not serve the common good. The presence of millions of people living without easy access to basic human rights and necessities is a great injustice. It borders on being slavery. And the, the current U.S. Catholic bishops also reaff reaffirmed their solidarity with the dreamers of this country, whose lives and futures hang in the balance, and so endorsed the MECDED, the American Dream and Promise Act. So these three principles lead us to consider the burden of emergencies, such as war, floods, droughts, and destructive hurricanes such as we have been witnessing in recent times. This burden often leads to mass migration, and it cannot be placed solely on the country affected and the adjacent countries. Justice dictates that 
the rural community contribute resources towards shelter, food, medical care, and basic welfare and to open borders to those suffering. At present time, uh, our leader of the Catholic Church, is the, uh, Pope Francis, has spoken often and published documents regarding the lives of migrants and refugees. has written a major uh, encyclical, Fratelli, in Italian it comes Fratelli Tutte, Brothers All, speaks of the immigrant, even as individuals maintain their comfortable con consumerist isolation. They can choose a form of constant and febrile bonding that encourages remarkable hostility, insults, abuse, and defamation. And our Pope Francis on the World Day of the Migrant and Refugee, September of 2022, says, History teaches us that the contribution of migrants and refugees has been fundamental to the social and economic growth of societies. And Pope Francis, speaking at a special ceremony in October of this year, says, Indeed, the situations of migrants is criminal. They are left to die in front of us, making the Mediterranean the largest cemetery in the world. We do not open the doors to them. We exclude them where they are exploited and sold as slaves. This can easily be applied to those seeking entry at the U.S. southern border, many of whom died during the long walk from the south, traveling through dangerous condi conditions. This can also include the thousands who are bought and sold along the way, treated inhumanely, inhumanely during the journey, and finally enslaved when arriving at their destination. So these are from, again, what we share in scripture with our many Christian denomination, brothers and sisters, that we also share many of these ideas, I believe, with other faith denominations. And we have these uh, documents, um, sayings of the Pope, who are leading us in these days in our treatment of the migrants and immigrants. <laughs>